If your website doesn't have a contact form, you're leaving money on the table. In this video, I'll show you how to build a high converting contact form using Next.js, SendGrid, and React email to make sure that you never miss another lead. So let's get started by taking a quick look at our overall application architecture as well as some best practices for implementing this sort of form. So we start off with our user submitting the form, so just this form submission here, at which point we'll validate it client side using Zod. So we will make sure the email address is valid, make sure the phone number is the right length, and make sure the rest of the required fields are present. Assuming that goes well, we'll send that over to the server side of the Next.js application, at which point we will populate the React email template, make it look all pretty. Um, we'll then take the HTML from that and send the email by sending it over to the SendGrid API. Assuming that comes back with a successful response, we'll relay that 200 response back over to the client side, at which point a success message will be displayed to the user. In terms of best practices, we want to keep these forms as simple as possible, with as few fields as possible. This increases the likelihood that the user will actually complete the form. We definitely want these forms to be mobile friendly, as a majority of the users will most likely be on mobile platforms. And lastly, we want a clear call to action, so something like submit would probably work, but you'll see higher hit rates with something like get in touch or get a free quote or request a callback, something along those lines. So let's get started by implementing our Zod validator. So we're going to have a field for the name, phone number, email, message body, and then a zip code since this is oriented towards service businesses. Um, so let's get started with that name field. So that's going to be a required field with a max length of 100. The max length is kind of arbitrary, but it's worth keeping on there. Uh, the phone number, so this regex, just make sure that it's 10 digits long. Email, Zod has a specific validator for emails, um, and that field is optional. Message body, so we want that to be a string. It's required, and we give them up to 1,000 characters. And lastly, zip code, just another regex validator to make sure that that is five digits long. So let's get started by implementing the client side portion of this form. So here I just have a basic Next.js client component. I'm going to move through this pretty quickly, but source code is available on GitHub if you need it. Uh, so go ahead and ignore these imports for now. Those will make sense as we move through this. But I'm going to start off by implementing React hook form using that Zod resolver that we just created. So let me get that pasted in here. So we're using this use form hook and we're just passing it the type created from that Zod resolver that we just made. And we're telling React hook form that we're using Zod resolver using the schema that we defined over in interfaces. We're going to break register, handle submit, and our errors from our form state out of this, as well as a reset function for clearing the form after it's submitted. So next up, we'll just add a use state component for managing our success message. So assuming this goes well server side, we'll display a message that you know tells the user that their request was successfully submitted or the email was successfully sent, something like that. Next up, let's actually implement the uh, JSX necessary for this form. So we have our outer form component here, calling this uh, React hook form handle submit function. And uh, we'll define this on submit function here in a second. Um, for each of our form fields, it's a label containing a input component, and we register that with React hook form. Um, so each one is registered with a specific field, so name, email, phone, and zip code, as well as a message down at the end. And below each um, field, we have you know, errors specifically relating to that field. This will only display if they're actually present. So let's go ahead and get that on submit function actually defined. So this on submit function is an async function. It just takes in the uh, contact form type. So this is the type of the Zod resolver we just defined. Uh, we're going to try to post that to slash API slash contact. We'll define that API route here in a second. And the body for this request is just a stringified version of that data. So we wait for that response to come back. And if it comes back with a 200 status, so response.ok, we'll let the user know that their message was sent. And then we'll clear the form. If it doesn't come back successful, uh, we'll go ahead and let the user know that the message failed to send and ask them to try again later. I forgot to mention this earlier, but the success message is displayed at the bottom of the form next to the submit button, uh, just right here. And if it's populated, we just display it next to the button. So real quick, let's just move over to the page and get this component integrated. So over here, we just pull this contact form in from components and go ahead and throw it into the body of the home page. I just have this dummy heading here. You don't need that at all. If you want to make this look pretty, I have the uh, styles uploaded to the Git repository as well. 
So next up, let's implement that slash API slash contact route. So as you can see here, this is in app slash API slash contact. I'm going to move through this pretty quickly as well, but starting off, we have our sender email and our receiver email. So this is the address that the email will be sent from, and this is the address that the contact request will be sent to. So if you're building this for a client, this is where you'd put their email. So here we just have a Next.js post route handler. So we have a request object, and we go ahead and extract the data from that just with request.json. Um, we set up SendGrid and set its API key. Uh, you'll have to generate this, and I'll leave a link to the documentation on how to do that in the description. So next we're going to create a React element uh, using the contact email template. Uh, I haven't gone over this yet, but for now let's just say that this populates that template, and then this converts it to just a pure HTML string. So once we have that, we're going to set up our actual email. So it's to the receiver address from the sender address. This will be our title that will show in the inbox. And then we just give it that HTML string. Next, we're going to call sendgridmail.send. And assuming that goes through, we'll send a 200 response back to the client side. If we encounter an error anywhere in this try block, we will send a 500 response back to the client. So let's take a real quick look at the React email template. I'll provide a link to the documentation for this in the description as well. And uh, source code is available on GitHub too. So React email provides its own HTML type tags. These just are formatted in a email friendly way. So make sure the width is right and only implement supported functions. Uh, so here we just have a HTML with a body. This container, make sure it's the right width that it will display well on a mobile inbox. So we pull out all of our data from that request. This is again the type of that Zod resolver. So it has all of our fields here. And we're just putting that into a container and section in a key value pair format. So this will display as name and then right next to it will be the name given in the submission. And just repeat that for all these fields. And down here I went ahead and added my logo to the footer. So this uh, horizontal return just adds a you know, plain line and then my footer will be right below that. With React email, unless you're using Tailwind CSS, you do have to do something somewhat strange in terms of styles. Uh, so I like using SCSS, but I couldn't find any direct compatibility with that. Um, so what I had to do here is define these CSS properties objects. So this just supports you know, all the normal CSS properties, and then I just set that as the style for each of these components. Lastly, in order to get this functional, you'll need to put your SendGrid API key into a .env file. Again, I'll include a link to the SendGrid documentation on how to generate this in the description. So now that we have everything implemented, let's give the actual form a try. So I'm just going to fill in all these fields. So now that I have all these fields populated, I'm just going to go ahead and submit the form. We get our success message down here. And at this point, let's take a look at what the formatted email looks like. Thank you guys for watching. Feel free to leave any questions or suggestions down in the comments below.